you, I hope you notice a few things uh, different uh, this uh, Sunday. I won't uh, go into the detail, but uh, our signer, Donna, and the uh, uh, deaf community, they are invited to go to uh, St. Joseph in Barstown, Kentucky, uh, where our former pastor, uh, Father Randy, is there, and uh, they invited the community, so Donna, uh, our signer, and the deaf community are not here. And second, you notice there are three priests this morning, which is very unusual. I invited Father Emmanuel and Father, uh, Father Claudio to uh, assist uh, me um, uh, in the sacrament of anointing moments later. Uh, I know Father Claudio has to go uh, to uh, Immaculate Conception, so um, you may go after the anointing. He, he's on a run. Um, that's being said, uh, uh, the focus, I hope, of, for this weekend of my homily and reflection is how to bring the meaning of the sacraments of anointing uh, uh, to us here this morning. Um, in the first reading today from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, at the, uh, toward the very end of the passage that we heard, Jeremiah told the people, uh, the, uh, the Jews who were in exile or were about to be taken captive into exile, and uh, he uh, uh, pr uh, proudly says that the Lord God, our justice. So in a sense, uh, Jeremiah really believed then that God is our justice. If we really think of what uh, Jeremiah says in the uh, first reading today, and uh, looking at the situations or our own lives, uh, each and every one of us, the question should be asked uh, honestly, can God be our justice? Looking around us, you see, uh, there's so much suffering around us. Uh, let not, uh, 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 we don't have to go into detail, but um, a few days ago, I was in a conversation with uh, one of uh, uh, people I know who uh, worked in the high school, and I myself familiar with that. And I was told that uh, you should be a surprise, quote, to see how many high school students are suffering from anxiety and depression. And those of us who are parents and grandparents have young children and you see that we think that uh, uh, they do well, but in their own lives there's so much struggles. Let alone, let's look at the, uh, uh, in the last three weeks, the uh, aftermath of, the, uh, of our own uh, election here. Um, almost half of the country, the people are suffering mentally, psychologically. There's a mental breakdown in our society. Put ourselves once again in uh, one of those who are uh, living in Ukraine, living in Israel, in the Gaza Strip, and in Lebanon and many other parts of the world in which poverty is ravaging the people. Think of those people and try to put ourselves in their own shoes. And I'm sure none of us here is without one or two uh, periods or uh, a, a part of uh, our suffering. We all go through those moments of difficulties either economically, psychologically, emotionally, and even family relationship that we struggle each day. That brings us to the whole question, can God be our source of justice? Can God be our source of salvation? I do believe that Jeremiah, when he wrote that very last phrase or last uh, uh, sentence in the passage we heard today, he truly meant that. As we see, uh, just look at those around us who suffer uh, and struggles. One of the things that we notice and I hope that we see in, the, in there is sometime they do not allow God or Jesus to be part of their journey. Because we, as human beings, we often rely too much on other humans to solve the problem that we go through, but we don't let God be part of our journey. For Jeremiah, by contrast, 
when Jeremiah put God as part of his journey and also as the focus of his life, even among his own people, the Israelite who was going through, uh, were taken into captive and for decades in Babylon, Jeremiah continued to preach the message that God is their justice. God is their salvation. How can we see God if in, our, in the midst of our struggle to be the one who brings justice and salvation to us? The question I see, or at least in my own mind, in my own understanding, is that do we allow God to be part of our problems. We often look to other human beings to solve our problem, but we often forget also that we human beings are the causes of our own downfall. And God must be the ultimate of salvation, the ultimate of our hope. So long as we leave God out of our own equation, we, it is very difficult for us to acknowledge and to affirm that God is our justice for Jeremiah. God was. And the first reading, he also mentioned that uh, he uh, promised that God would raise up for David a just should, implying, as we recall last week, uh, the last weekend of the, our uh, previous year of the liturgical calendar, and I listened, I did uh, happen to listen to both homilies, one by Deacon Randy, uh, uh, Randy and the other by Father Emmanuel. They, uh, they both talked about this, the uh, contrast or the image of the true king, as we recall the, the uh, uh, last weekend was about uh, Jesus was the king of the universe. He, they contrast between the true king and the kings of this world. So long as we allow the king or human beings, our own leaders, to solve our problems, God, in our own struggles and suffering, is difficult to be seen as our justice and our savior. We must rely on God to save us, not human being. And we must allow God to walk with us in our journey. That may allow, uh, 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 allow me to take to the next part about the sacrament of anointing. As we are aware that this sacrament is one of the seven sacraments that the Catholic Church not only teaches, but also believes and encourages everyone to participate in. And I, for one, have seen, uh, uh, because of my privilege of, of going to a hospital, nursing home, and homebound, and anoint people here in church, sometime and over the century, these sacraments have been misunderstood as only being administered to those who are about to die or those who are dying. But in fact, how can the sacraments of God or the outward sign of God's grace be administered for only those who die? In fact, the true meaning of this sacrament, it is the act of healing. And in our own society today, in our own lives, in our own struggles and suffering, it is the right at every moment we are invited to receive God's healing. And this sacrament does just that. And uh, so in a sense, uh, I invite all of us in a few moments as we begin uh, this, the, the prayer and the rite into the sacrament, I invite all of us to listen to the words that is provided to us by the church in those prayer, every single words that was prepared that I uh, take out uh, from the book uh, of prayer, that they say, they speak to us, they invite us to be healed by God's grace. Only when we see that, then God, according to Jeremiah, continue to be our justice. God can continue to be our salvation, and God can continue to be our source of salvation.